it should be very exciting and interesting. This is the old Kettle Valley Railway, an old tra... As I flee that bug, I head out onto the old Kettle Valley Railway for a bike ride. But that's just the proverbial tip of this episode. This is a continuation of my ultimate summer van life trip, and after a slow start, I'm finally hitting the road proper. It'll be a big driving day, but it'll all be worth it in the end, because we're finally getting somewhere. Let's go. Well, welcome back to the channel. I am at the Myra Canyon Provincial Park, and we are about to ride Myra Canyon. I got my bike there, and this is a little map showing what we're gonna be doing. This is a pretty famous bicycle trip here in Kelowna, BC. And well, we're here at the Ruth Station and we're gonna be following the Kettle Valley Railway all the way through all these trestles. There's 18 trestles and a few tunnels and we are gonna ride them all. And it should be very exciting and interesting. This is the old Kettle Valley Railway and old tra and the old train trestles. So, like I said, it's gonna be beautiful. It is very hot, but we're gonna go for a ride, so let's go. After a quick stop in the bathroom, I'm officially on the trail. As I mentioned, I'm riding along the old Kettle Valley Railway, which once connected Midway to Hope via rail, and now still does via trail. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen it before. This railway was an engineering marvel and the Myra Canyon here will soon show you why. Well, I'm at my first trestle. If you check it out, that's the old trestle. There are, like I said, 18 of them, which is pretty sweet. And if you come down here, you can see them. They're old wooden trestles. And if we actually come out onto the trestle here, you can see a pretty epic view. I believe the views are gonna get better, but uh, we're way up in the Myra Canyon. And uh, way down there somewhere is Kelowna. But there's 18 of these, and I'm just gonna ride my bike on them all and check them all out. Beautiful ride. And uh, I'm excited to keep going. Originally built between 1912 and 1914, these 18 trestles allowed the railway to sneak around the canyon and traverse the KVR's highest point, 1,275 meters, which has us soaring high above the Okanagan Valley. The further we go along, the greater in size, length, and height these trestles become, and they stand tall as a reminder that if there's a will, there's a way. Well, we are just about at trestle number four, which looks quite a bit longer than the other ones. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but there's one over there as we uh, a little horseshoe around the valley. But I pulled up next to a donkey engine, which is that. And uh, apparently it was on a platform near the bottom of this trestle at one point in time. And this trestle once burned in 2003. There was actually a huge fire in this uh, area in 2003. Wiped out a bunch of trestles. I'm not 100% sure how many, but they had to rebuild them because, like I said, it's a very popular place. And uh, it's honestly, it's a great place. But anyways, gonna keep riding. This is trestle four. I got 14 more, but well, plus this one. So we have a lot of trestles to go. So I'm just gonna keep riding and uh, probably not stop at all of them like I have been doing. That fire in 2003 actually burnt down 12 trestles and damaged a couple of others. It also burned down 270 homes and 26,000 hectares of forest. It was a truly devastating fire and many people thought that was the end of the line for the old Kettle Valley Railway. It would not be though. Through hard work, volunteers, and good old government money, all the trestles were rebuilt in their original style bringing Andrew McCullough's original vision back to life. Now, well over 100 years on, Myra Canyon is now a protected provincial park along with another trestle, the Bellevue Trestle, which creates Myra Bellevue Provincial Park. 
This makes for a recreational biking hotspot and it's on many people's must-do lists. Hey, I just pulled up here to my first tunnel. I think there's three tunnels, but there might only be two. I do not remember, but it's pretty crazy. Just blasted right through the rock. And uh, yeah, pretty interesting. So we're gonna roll through. I think we're getting pretty close to the end, but uh, until then, we're just gonna keep riding. There are in fact two tunnels here. And as I alluded to, they are just holes blasted through rock. Along with these tunnels, there are several other areas of the trail that have clearly been carved out in the same way. Altogether, it's pretty amazing the amount of effort it took to build just this small 12 kilometer section of railway. But where would we be without the railway? Hey, we just got to the other side. We are at the uh, opposing parking lot. And uh, it was a good ride. It was just over 11K. And I'm gonna take a quick little break here, drink some more water, because it is hot. You gotta stay hydrated. Now, that being said, I'm just gonna bomb back. Probably go a little quicker. Probably the same speed, but in uh, video time, a little quicker. <laughs> okay, so I just got back to the van. You can see it in behind me. And I'm in the parking lot. This is the Ruth Station. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of room for parking. There are no, no overnight parking signs. So I was pretty seriously, I literally came up here with the plan to camp here, not camp, park overnight and sleep in my van. That's what I was going to do. But honestly, I think I'm going to roll out of here. I, uh, I want to have a different, I want to have a different destination tomorrow. So I think I'm going to move closer to that. But before we move on, I am absolutely starving. So I'm gonna dip into my fridge here. And oh, first we got ice cold water. Oh my God. And we got a big old piece of lasagna. This is my mom's cooking. Uh, before I came up here, I was at my parents' house in Soyce. My mom fed me really well, and she sent me with a big old Greek salad that I had for breakfast slash lunch today. And now, for the afternoon post-ride snack, we're going with big old fresh lasagna. We had it last night for dinner, so it's not fresh, but uh, leftover lasagna. And uh, I'm pretty stoked, so I'm going to eat that, and then we're going to move on out of here, find somewhere to stay for the night. I've talked too much already. Let's go. That was so good. So I've done a little bit more thinking and after eating some food and having some mental clarity, I have decided that I am gonna stay here. This was my plan to start. Why should I change it? And I think I'm gonna go canoe Myrtle River or Myrtle Lake tomorrow not tomorrow the day after but i think i'm just gonna head right there tomorrow when i was gonna leave here i was gonna go do something else tomorrow but i think i'm just gonna drive right through and uh yeah i'm kind of bored of being around the city so i want to get out in the back country so i'm gonna go sooner to myrtle lake so i'm gonna stay here again this is my spot Big open parking lot. There's a couple people here, but it is Monday night on long weekend. So I feel like these people are probably leaving and I doubt it'll be busy here tomorrow morning, but I will leave probably fairly early and, uh, and head up to Myrtle Lake. But anyways, I got my solar panels up. Sun is behind this tree in a cloud. 
but I do anticipate it showing on or shining on here. So I'm just going to test them for the sake of testing them because I have them. So yeah, I honestly, I'm just chilling for the rest of the night and I'll probably do a little bit of reading on, uh, a little more reading on Myrtle Lake, but yeah, I'm just chilling. At some point I'll set up my bed, but, uh, I am staying put tonight. Well, good morning. I am just about ready to roll out of here. My van is all ready to go. But last night there was a thunderstorm here, which was pretty interesting. And I also met a guy from Germany that was on a four week road trip through Canada, Western Canada. So I just sat and chatted with him all night, which was quite interesting. But anyways, like I said, I'm about to roll out of here. It's a big transition day. I got like five plus hours worth of driving today and I'm not really looking forward to it. Looking forward to it or not, I did have five hours to drive regardless. I started down the mountain where you quickly realize just how high up you actually were. Unfortunately, I was stuck falling behind this slow truck most of the way down, but I can't really complain because this truck was up there doing trail maintenance before I even woke up. So keep up the good work, although, drive a little faster. Eventually, we did get to town, and I was already needing my first break of the day. Okay, I just pulled up to this nice little spot. It's actually a dog park. As you can see, it's got a good lake view, and I just picked up a subway. So we're gonna eat some lunch, and then we're gonna head back. As like I said, we got a long drive, but uh, gotta eat, reset the mind. And then we'll head out of here. After lunch, I leave the dog park and really set in for the drive. I only made a couple more stops on the drive one at the grocery store, and a quick one at the gas station. This was all about putting in the distance. The driving part of the van life is always bittersweet. It's not really how you want to spend your time, but you ain't really going anywhere if you're not prepared to put in the miles, or in my case, the kilometers. I even drove long enough to see the rain. At this point, I was exhausted, but also very close. I had a wreck site picked out on Google Maps and a few more kilometers on a gravel road and I was finally there. Unfortunately my audio didn't record here at camp. So you missed me waxing poetically about my can of freeze dried ground beef. Sad I know, but I'll let this campsite speak for itself. turned out very good. Mm. Mm. It's actually way better than I would have thought. But anyways, that's it. I'm just going to eat my dinner, chill. I'll probably get in the van pretty early. I would like to have an early start tomorrow. So, yeah, I'll probably wrap it up early. So that being said, good night and I will see you in the morning. Well, good morning. I slept great last night and uh, I plan on heading out of here as soon as possible. Before we do that, I'll let you check out my view. <laughs> I'll probably show you the view one more time before we leave. Uh, I'll have to put my shirt on and hop out of here first. 
But I'm going canoeing this morning, so I'm going to head out here as soon as possible. I'm going to Myrtle Lake, which will be about four or five days. Not 100% sure. But like I said, I would like to head out here as soon as possible. I'll throw a shirt on, show you the, show you the view in full, and then we'll head out of here. This is the coldest it's been since I left and uh, the most moisture I've seen since I left. It's been so hot and dry. It's been absolutely savage, but it's uh, proper cool now. Anyways, I'll give you one final look at the view. That is pretty awesome. This is a great place. I'm officially out here now. So that being said, that's the end of this episode. I'm about to go canoeing. Peace.